MKXYZ. What's up? What's up? Are you talking about the college experience? <laughs> hey, I do my homework. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm love <laughs> I actually really love that, though. Like, no cap. Like, I love that. No problem at all. MKXYZ, I am D. Sewell. We are in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Come on, at, uh, Kiss, <laughs> at KISS 105.3. We really appreciate you spending your time. Shout out to the station. Shout out to you for sure. Appreciate that. Uh, MKXYZ, I always like to start at the beginning and uh, talk about where you're from and uh, some of your musical influences. So where are you from, MKXYZ? So I am originally born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, Duval County, you know, West Side. Uh, okay. <laughs> Got to emphasize, you know, some of y'all know. Uh, but then I, um, I've been singing and dancing like forever. So I'm just taking you through. So then I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. And then I, I'm also ra I like to say I'm raised in both because technically I spent you know, my childhood being in, in, in Jacksonville and then the rest of it in Charlotte. And then I went on to college um, in Greensboro, North Carolina, which is like an hour and a half away before, oh. of course, leaving and then coming to Atlanta. And so now I'm based in Atlanta. Yes, West Side. <laughs> West Side. <laughs> so around what age were you when you moved to, uh, when y'all moved to North Carolina? It was in, uh, I was in fifth grade, I believe. So... 2008, 2008, so I, what was that like, 11, something like that, something like that, it was, it was 10, 11, 9, 10, or 11, I believe it's 10. I feel you, so uh, any musical influences from uh, Florida or North Carolina, or did you just kind of, whatever you was watching at the time? So, yeah, so I literally grew up listening to a lot of R&B, a lot of old school hip hop, uh, neo soul, just, uh, Motown, definitely Motown. Granny, shout out to you. Uh, but just that was really the ear that I got used to from the moment I was a, a young little sap up till now. I've been always like that's been uh, my natural ear. So really, when I was when I was singing, because I was I've been like I said, I've been singing and dancing since I was like three, four years old. Um, that was the natural sound that I was producing. So. Definitely, all the all the groups. That's dope. So you was singing and dancing as a little kid. So when did you finally know that you were good and it was something that you would kind of think about pursuing? I never actually. It's funny that you say that. I never actually wanted to pursue music. Like I never said I want to be a singer or a dancer. Like all my life, that wasn't a thing. Like I feel like as a kid, I just knew that it was it was always a gift. I think there's a difference between a talent and a gift. And I knew that it was a gift uh, because it wasn't something that I went to school for. I never took classes for it. Like my mom was a dancer. She danced uh, a really long time. Uh, she did point ballet. And my, my biological she was a great dancer. So it was almost like it was, you know, inherited. Like you <laughs> gonna do this too. Like you gonna know how to, you know, hit a little box. Yeah. So yeah. I just always did it. But um, so I just felt like I knew I was good, I guess. I never really asked somebody, hey, can I sing well? Or can I dance well? I just always saw the reactions from people. And they were like, oh, you need to keep doing this. And my mm -hmm. mom and I always put out um, YouTube videos. Like, I, like when YouTube first, first came out and no one really put out um, YouTube videos, I was putting out YouTube videos. <laughs> So I was out there views and stuff like that. But right when they decide, like this is before they said, "Oh, we gonna monetize YouTube." Okay. Videos. Like this is right at that point, and they offered me, you know, they wanted to monetize stuff like that when I was a kid. But then I stopped doing that, um, and I just focused on school, and that's really what where the pivot came in. But I, but the thing is, like, like I stopped doing YouTube videos, but I always was singing and dancing. I always did talent shows. Um, I went to a school of the arts. Um, but it was, it was for a short period of time. And then I just, but I, I, I was balanced in both. So I was always really good at the arts, but I was like really in the sciences too. Like I was always like excelling in school. So, you know, I had my, my, I had my ups and downs in school, but I, like I ultimately went on to pursue a, a degree in school. Uh I want to go back to the YouTube video. So how did that come about? Like, how did you even get the courage to do that and just, just stay consistent with it 
And um, how was it getting the, you know, the reactions from it and, and the views and, and checking that out at the time? So my mom um, really had a lot to do with, I would say, artist development as a whole. Because, you know, as like, when you're like five, six, seven, eight, nine, you're all over the place, you know what I mean? You're just enjoying what it's like to be a kid. And for me, it was more so that, but there was always moments where my mom was like, she would know, she would see me. Like, it was like she just knew that she had to keep me on that track, you know? She could tell, you know how like kids, they want it. And then like, but they might be uncertain, they might be shy, they might need to, like to really be pushed. So like, she definitely helped with a lot of the, the just the building blocks of it. Um, you know, and so whenever we did YouTube videos, it built up a lot of my, like, like now being in the game as an adult is different because there's certain things that I don't have to, I wouldn't even say I have to work as hard, but that's an easier way to say it. Like, there's just things I already naturally knew how to do that some artists that might not know how to look at it into a camera might not know how to play with, you know, your eyes and different things like that, where I just kind of always, I was just doing this like clockwork, not even realizing that I had been doing it. For so long, so it's just, skill, and yeah, yeah, I was so building cool. my skills, but um, it was all, it was so natural, so organic. So we just it just always like made me feel like like I always remember watching like Missy Elliott's videos and being like, I would kill that dance though. Like you know how she always has a whole bunch of like I mean dancers like eating it up, yeah. and like they'll be in the video, and I felt like man like. I could do this and I could do this, but on a whole nother level, but it's going to be on the timing that's supposed to be for me. That's dope. Uh, MKXYZ, once again, this is uh, KISS 105.3 in Fayetteville, and uh, we're at College Town. Like, the U of A is literally, the University of Arkansas is literally right up there. Like, I can walk to it. So uh, we want to talk about your college experience, and I noticed you talked about you didn't finish, but I know college molds people a lot. So what's something that's very important that you learned in college or something that you went through in college? That was very important. So, to you. I think college is one of the funnest experiences, most insightful experiences that a young adult can have because a lot I feel like a lot of people who don't go to school would say, "Well, you don't really learn much in college until you get into the real world." I completely disagree. I feel like I feel like unless you've had that experience and you fully live that experience, not like you went and you only went to class and that was it. I'm talking about like I lived on campus. You know, I had like the big buildings, like a, a decent sized campus while I'm walking, I'm walking my hands, we're in the cafeteria, we're going to frat parties. We're, you know, I like to be on the yard. I like to see frat brothers and store roars. Like I was in the experience. So for me though, I feel like you, you witness, like you have to navigate so many different spaces without mom and dad. Like some people have mom and dad and they just right there. Oh, you need money for tuition. Oh, you need this. Oh, you need that. Here you go. Here you go. But I really, like, I told my parents, I was like, I just kind of want to figure it out on my own. Like, I told them. And, like, you know, my, my parents, they're like, okay. <laughs> like, if you say so. But, you know, we still going to be here, right? And you ain't going to be out here in the streets just doing whatever, right? So, but I still was able to really blossom. And, like, my first, like, my first years, like, me being 18, 19, just, like, like, oh, what is there all to do? Like, I'm free. Like, not free as in, like, it was a bad thing. But, like, I, got, I get to, like, literally go where I want to go for the first time. And there's no curfew. And there's, but I'm also, like, pursuing something that actually interests me. So I just really learned how to, like, grow up in that space. And so, like, it really just gave me some different tools. Like, how to, how to manage money. How to make money. Will you not offer to work study? <laughs> that. Um, yeah. and also just being social and going through relationships like when you're for and you're and you know like a lot of people they were in love in high school and they just they get to college and they're like well peace out there's no people around here so but i just learned so many different things i love college i, I really do um hopefully i get to finish the degree track that i was on um or find a way to integrate it with my career now in, in some way. You definitely will. That's super dope. Uh, so let's talk about your name. I know you get that question a billion times, but for the people that have not heard, how did you get that name? MKXYZ. Yeah, so, so Michaela is my name. 
<laughs> I do get this question a lot. So Michaela is my name. Um, but I like to her be called MK. Everybody calls me MK. They'd be like, hey MK. Uh, okay. but <laughs> the XYZ, the XYZ part of it is just all of those experiences like since I came out, um, and just being queer and just being um a woman of color. Uh, growing up in the South and all those experiences and just not wanting to be labeled, not wanting to be boxed in. Um, and that, that being like the pinnacle of everything and how important that is to me and how like, you know, like I never wanted to to really just meet, meet society's expectations, only meet my own and, and set a different bar that has been given to me as a woman um, and just kind of reclaiming that energy. So that's what the XYZ is. But it's also all inclusive because that's the X Y Z in me. But the X Y Z is universal, so it's like there could be. Um, I'm pretty sure like everybody who's watching has a part of themselves that just doesn't necessarily meet anything else. It's just your own thing. You feel me? It's kind of like how Malcolm X, Malcolm X. You know, there was that the X signifies important that there is more than just this part. There's an extension that carries so much. You know, so definitely that's the best. That is super dope. So let's talk about uh, you getting discovered. So uh, you got flew out to Atlanta. So can you tell us about that story and how you got signed and all of that? Oh, you, you, you a student. Come on. <laughs> so halfway through school, it was like my junior, like my sophomore juniorish year, somewhere like that. Um, like I put out a cover of Cruise by Smokey Robinson. Um, and I was just like, I think I had went on a break and I did it like, I don't know if it was like a, I don't know, a Christmas, Thanksgiving, something like that. But I put out a, a cover. And at the time, I had a lot of stuff going viral already as it is. So I, I had a lot of people hitting my line like, oh my God, I love to manage you. Uh, I love to work with you. Like the first person to ever hit me up was Omarion. He was like, oh, you could dance and sing. Like, you're so talented you know, but he was putting out his own project and he got more caught up in that. Uh, and then I put out the video and then Tricky Stewart, uh, my mentor, my manager, like that's my guy, um, just introduced me to the family. He was, but, but before that he was just like, yo, come to Atlanta. Like, let's just see if we vibe. Let's just like make music. Let's make magic. Let's um, see what's up with you. You know, you're talented. I want to, I want to get to know you. So then I went to Atlanta and then we did four records and the records were crazy. Like, I was just like, man, like, I, you know, I didn't go in with the intention of, oh, is he gonna sign me? Like, I wasn't a uh, sign me happy, like happy go lucky person. I was just like, you know, I'm on break. I'm on my spring break, um, you know, and this is an opportunity that if it, if it, if this manifests into what I think it's gonna manifest into, then wow. But, you know, I, I just wanna have the experience. So um, I was really thankful that he brought me down. Um, and it was just like the most organic relationship where it's just, it's just literally, even yesterday, like we, we spent some time in the studio yesterday just talking about the evolution. It's just crazy, but he, he's so cool. He, he just has so many gems because he's, he's met everybody, he's seen everybody, he's, he's been in the game, he's made literally the soundtrack to my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> So it's just like, there's so much respect. And then on top of being his artist and then also him getting me signed to Epic uh, and meeting Sylvia and Z, my a &R, It's just like really, it's like a really dope experience, but he was the, was, the, was the really, was like, you know what? I believe in you because you believe in you. And as long as you have that, as long as you believe in yourself and you really put your most authentic self into your work and you know, it's, it's anything can manifest. So that's literally how it happened, though. I that's just, so, so dope. we so, linked up. That's, the vibe. that's dope. So, of course, we got to talk about the big single that you have out. You know that. But uh, G Easy called Pass It. Uh, how did that come together? Pass It. <laughs> so, uh -oh. so, <laughs> hey, don't gas me. So, Pass It. Um, I, I love telling the story because like I always remember it vividly. I was in Vegas. It was like my first time on the West Coast. Well, my second, but really my first time in Vegas. I had never been to Vegas before, but I heard the story. And literally what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And that's just the tea. 
But I, uh, it was my birthday, May 15th. Good morning. It was my 21st birthday. Um, and I, my, my team was like, guess where we going, MK? And I was like, where we going? And um, birthday vibes. And it was like, you want to Vegas. And you are going to make hits for your birthday. And I was like, cool, whatever. So we get there. We had already spent some time making, like, we did quite a few records. I wasn't the only one. We, like, did quite a few records. But on my birthday, we did Pass It. And I was just looking for, like, I was looking for that turn up record. I was looking for that West Coast, like, true pocket. Like, I want to vibe. I want to dance. Like, I want to, like, introduce myself. Like, what's up? Pass it. <laughs> what's she going to let me do? You already know because it's right in your face. So <laughs> it was very, it was very, like, just a vibe. And then having g Easy on it and just because he, you know, like, all of g Easy like, versus, like, he just be in a pocket. Just floating. Like yeah. zip, zip. Yeah, it's just like it's just like you just in a like, you know what I mean? And I just felt like it just came together like that. That's so so dope. So uh you have the new project you're working on called Sweet Spot, correct? Yes, Sweet <laughs> Spot. The, the project, the duality, definitely. I got you. I got you. So how's that coming right now? So Sweet Spot, we don't have a strong date for you yet. But um but Needless to say, we literally right at that point um, because we've had to move things around with COVID, uh, you know, COVID going on and all the situations going on right now. Um, but yeah, so Space Spot is definitely more, it's like the, I call it the extended introduction to NK because Pass It already does that. Like Pass It's already like, look hey, I'm here with it. And the video also like complements that too. It complements the sound. Um, hey! Uh, but the album itself just gives you more of that androgynous energy, that just that duality of it being like, it's, it's literally like, it, go, it gets hot, it gets spicy, it gets sweet. You know what I mean? I'm like hitting you right in the middle. And I think that as I feel like it's been missing, like we, we need this more than ever right now. And I'm telling you that because it's that's just facts. Like, we need that more than ever. We need, you know, women such as myself coming to the forefront and being so unapologetic and giving you that sweet spot where it's like, you know, it's just it's palatable. I'm rocking with that. I'm rocking with that. <laughs> okay, XYZ, I got two more things and then I got to let you go. Uh, one thing, and uh, you were talking about working on the album and a big single. Well, the word on the street is you have a the big word single. On the <laughs> now, the what I heard is you got a big single coming out with one of the hottest artists on the planet. Can you talk about that? Little baby. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Um, <laughs> all right. So, yes, this, this record, you know, I, I'm still going to leave it a tease. I'm not going to give you too much. All right, all right. I'm not going to give you too much, but yeah, you, you, will, you will be too. <laughs> But yes, working with Lil Baby, this record is definitely very different from Pass It. But okay. it's, it's, up, it's, it's, it's up tempo, so it's a vibe. But it's more East Coast, like like taking it back home. You know what I mean? East Coast is where it's at. So, but it's I, I think this record is definitely nostalgic for the hip hop lovers. You know, it's okay. definitely going to be nostalgic. Um, so look for that. That we actually been ready to work on a video for that. So it's it, that one's going to be before the album. So okay. That's going to be right right around the corner. Like that's the way to introduce it. <laughs> that's, that's how I'm about, that's how I'm about to do it to y'all. Because I had to I had to make an introduction, but it just keep coming. Like it just keep coming. That's yeah, so dope. All right, last thing. Mkxyz. I try to ask every artist this question and in my interviews like this because I think it's an important thing because when you first start okay. you have an idea of what you think it is and then you get in it it's, it's kind of different so I okay. always like to ask, <laughs> what's something you thought when you first started that you do not think anymore okay yes this is the biggest one for me it's the concept of time it's really? The, the, that's the easiest way to simplify it. In my, um, I used to believe in time, and I used to be like, time is of the essence. Time is crucial. Time, because when I came in, I was very much like, 
my bills have to be paid on time. I have to figure out what I'm doing in time. I have to, I don't have much time to do, you know what I mean? So I was always wrapped around this idea that time is at the center and time is something you can't get back. But as I evolved and ascended, it's been more so like, it's divine. It's, it's very much like all this time is already for you let go of that idea let go of the idea that you have to finish that you have to do this in time that that oh it isn't your time or it is it's been more so like you know what that timing is divine that's not something that you need to be focused on that's not something that you need to allow your, that you don't need to be slave to you don't need to be slave to time you know you got to really just be spiritually in the moment emotionally in the moment and it just manifests itself that way so it's, it's crazy because I used to be so like, like I used to be telling, like I used to tell Tricky all the time. I'm like, you don't understand. Like, I literally, I have to, like, I have to do this because how am I going to eat? Like, I used to be so wrapped around the idea, like, I cannot not be in this position. Yeah. And then he was just saying, like, you're still thinking like a regular person. Not, not not trying to he wasn't trying to diminish anything either he was really trying to get me to, to he was like pause for a second like you're still thinking about the kind of life where you're not doing what you love to do like like in a sense of how do I explain it it's just very much like you gotta let go of that yeah. you're in you're in the prime you're, you're in the prime don't be so attached to that idea you're doing everything that you need to do the way that you were supposed to do it. Your ancestors are already clearly showing you that. Because I, and then I, when I realized that I was like, I was literally about to schedule for classes for my second semester. And that's when we met. And I, and, and, and I literally remember walking to the office, talking to the advisor. And she said, I don't think you want to do this. I don't think you want to do biology. I don't think you want to. And I said, I have a scholarship for this. I'm going to finish. I'm first generation. My my parents, I'm the first. I have yeah. to finish. And she was like, but there's something that you want. To, don't even know this woman. And she was like, but there's something that you want to do that I just feel from you. It's an energy. And I was like, that moment, I decided to pause. I took a break from school. That's what that's what it was. I took a break from school, went to went to Atlanta, did the four song, and life changed. Boom. Just yeah, okay. like Deals straight Just up. Crazy. I love that. I love that. Well, MKXYZ, this has been a super dope interview. We appreciate you. Uh, keep killing the game. I'm gonna tell you one thing, and it's so crazy. We went deep at the end like that too. I uh, watch Joe Rogan a lot, and he talks about that the idea can find you, and a lot of stuff that you say that you weren't even pursuing this career. And just for you to be here now, it's like almost what you just said earlier, like the gift found you and you're just living that, through, you know what I'm saying? You're living that path through that gift. Even though you had another idea what you thought you were going to be doing. You know what I'm saying? So it's just so cool, your whole path and everything that you're doing. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it, really, it really means a lot. It's just, you know, you got to keep pushing. You definitely yeah. have to keep pushing. There's moments of doubt. I'm sure everyone has in their career where they're like, am I supposed to be doing this? And then yeah. you literally, once again, you let go of that. And it's like, it's presented to you. Like, yes, you're in your purpose. And I believe we all have multiple purposes. It's, we're multi-purpose. But um, it's just, you got to really, like, it's all in what you believe. You know what I mean? What do you believe, you know? And for me, like, music is just all through me. And that's just my, that's just my passion. We appreciate you, MKXYZ. Uh, we will talk to you later. Keep killing the game, and we're looking forward to that big single, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll have to do later.